Covert tactical operations, deep sea missions, underwater bomb disposal. This is the dangerous and secretive world of the Navy's elite clearance divers. One of the most extreme military jobs in the world. To become clearance divers, candidates must first conquer the Navy's most intense training program. It will take them to the limits of their mental and physical endurance. Only the toughest will make it. Of the hundreds who apply to become Navy divers each year, only a few are selected for the Clearance Diver Assessment Test, known as CDAT. There are 27 candidates in this group. For the next 10 days, they will be identified only by the numbers on their vests. Okay, number three, up. The testing will be relentless, specifically designed to weed out those who are physically and psychologically unsuitable. Good jump, right turn. Right. The Gate to Gate is a crippling four-hour fitness session that quickly exposes candidates who haven't prepared. Its intensity is relentless, creating pain and confusion. That is a flog session. That is basically the initial cutting away of the dead wood. Because those blokes, if they can't cop the gate to gate, that's uh, that's when they'll go. She's a drastically unprepared. Yeah, not thirsty, 17. That means you're not putting in. And just when they think the agony of this first exercise is finally over, they are ordered to do it all again. Put in more than you, bro. Quit walking, sick. Stop putting in. Sick, you no lagging behind. There's also a psychological effect to the gate to gate. They're continually being barked at. Do you really need it this bad? You don't want to be here. This is not for you, mate. Jump on the bus. It's not worth the pain. What are you doing? Fuck it, stand there in everyone else's way. Put it in. And I guarantee that we both put up his hand and goes, You're right. I don't want to be here. This is not for me. Hands up. Does that mean you're handing your vest in? By the second day, three candidates have already succumbed. It's a bit of a seed out tradition that uh, all the scalps from those that have uh, fallen remove themselves, become injured. We uh, they hang their vests up here for the rest of the candidates to see, and they will remain here for the entire period of see that. Our job here isn't really to get as many vests on here as we can. The idea is to get the right vests hanging up. You're ripping your mates off. Yeah. 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 You're not. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. move on. Take the weight up. The agony goes on. He's ripping you off. It's critical that clearance divers can operate effectively under severe pressure. Get some effort happening. Come on, one, two, one, two. They've got to learn to work under stress. As I say, there is all of a sudden they'd be tired, fatigued. These blokes might work in bomb disposal somewhere and say to them, which wire are you going to cut? Red one, blue one. Oh, I can't think. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, people's lives are in these people's hands. Uh, they need to know what they're uh, on about under stress. As the hammering continues, the casualties mount. But for candidate number 21, it's nothing new. He's experienced it all before. Yeah, this is uh, actually my second seat at. Yeah, I um, got pulled off the last one. It's a bit of a, a bit of an attitude problem. I was pretty keen to have another go because, like, 
being pulled off the last one, I just felt like, you know, I wanted, wanted to like, prove them wrong. 21, coaster. One over the bar, there's that many coasters here. Clearance diving attracts all types from all over the country. It's a prestigious and well-paid job. But for an 18-year-old tearaway like Brody Limbery from Outback Queensland, it offers much more. Yeah, this person here, um, yeah, not wouldn't be the person I'd like to go back to. I'm a bit of a clown. Heard my mother say for the first time when I was in the Navy that she was proud of me, pretty much. So, yeah, like, it's pretty much the only thing I'm really doing it for. So to make my mother proud and my family. Like, yeah, I didn't even think my brothers really looked up to me. Like, yeah, now they, my little brother wants to be like me, he reckons, when he grows up. Like, yeah, that's pretty good. In your own time, enter the water. Go. Oh, in the next test, candidates face over six hours in freezing water, swimming across Sydney Harbour. You guys are showing a distinct lack of fitness in and out of the water. Hypothermia, dehydration, and even the threat of shark attacks test the candidates' strength and nerve. They can withdraw at any time. On the deck, on the deck number three. Two hours in, and candidate number three requires treatment for severe cramp. Okay, yep, stretch it, stretch it. How are you going now, number three? Yeah. Yeah? So what am I doing sitting here talking to you, wasting my time with you? Divers out there are probably more important, eh? Yeah. I'm observing this uh, whole evolution. Their safety's in the back of my mind, and you're know, wasting time with you here. Do you think there's going to be supervisors out there who are going to really care if you pull out of a mission halfway through? There's no room for members not to pull their own weight in a clearance diving team. If you are not kicking, I will put you back on the boat and send you home. Number three, your number, duly noted. Okay, guys, you haven't hit the beach yet. Up to the wall, boys. Up to the wall. It's critical that the men remain hydrated during all phases of CDAT, and a water bottle must be carried at all times. Turn around, 15, explain to your team what you lost. I lost my drink bottle, guys. 15, what happens if that was a weapon that you lost? Compromise. What happens if it's diving kit that you lost? Cost to taxpayer. What happens if it's vital life-saving equipment and one of your mates gets into trouble? He dies. Fantastic, fall back in. The men have only 10 minutes to recover before receiving the next order. Second phase, commence. Now, return to base. Yeah, boys. Stay, 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 Stay in line. Stay in You got no water bottle to hold you back, so you should be able to move faster. Number three, four, five, six, eight. It's another four kilometres back to base. Swimming against the current, it will be past midnight before they arrive. This is a team effort, not an individual effort. It's a cold exhausting and boring exercise, and there's a temptation to relax and let the rest of the group pull you along. The observers look for the candidates who remain focused, team players who can stick to the task, no matter what. Usually there's uh, three types of candidates uh, you find on a seat at. You've got the guys that stand out as performers, you've got the, uh, the guys that trail uh, right down the back, because they're not putting in, and we've got the, uh, the grey man what we refer to, the man right in the middle, and that's that's usually the best guy to have. With performance comes attitude and cockiness sometimes. The grey man is where you want to be. You don't want to be noticed. You don't want your number getting written down for being good or bad. You just want to get to the end, and we go, holy shit, we didn't even know he was here. Your next activity is a medical evacuation test. The sandbags on each stretcher represent a casualty. Therefore, they are to be treated as such. Hauling 60 kilograms of sandbags through steep bushland is an endurance test, but it's also about teamwork. Yeah, stepping up. Clearance divers work together. The team must always take priority over the individual. So when something as precious as a water bottle is left behind, only one thing matters. Can I go back down and grab it? Unless what are you going to do the rest of the teammates if you're uh, severing the ties right here? 
What's gonna happen to yeah, them? Yeah, you're gonna let them down. Yeah, you're gonna let them down? Yeah. What's that mean to the team? Yeah, it's not good for the team, so save You've the team. answered your own question. Tell me when you're up. And they hide in the bushes and watch as you're coming past. You see a shadow of a person in the background and um, and then you wonder when they're, what, what they're scribbling in their books, whether they're writing something about you or, or one of the boys. I think um, the old saying of being the grey man would be the perfect scenario for everybody. Just keeping your mouth mouth closed, try not to show too much emotion, try not to be excited, try not to be disappointed, try not to look like you're upset when they tell you you've got 20 more k's to go after it's already felt like 100. Refurbish your gear, ensure ready for another move. Are there any questions? The only thing that the staff needs to say to these guys is just the robotic, this is what you're doing, this is the activity, these are the timings carried out. You don't want to get involved in these blokes because you may bring to the table, like, well, he's, he seems a nice enough bloke. Doesn't cut it. Who cares if he's a nice bloke? <laughs> a nice bloke doesn't win a war. Do you want to be seen as the guy who comes last on this Evolution 24? Let's go, boys! Get your fins off! What are you doing, 21? Get your hands oh, around the bar! What are you doing? Going forward. Going forward. Of course, you'll be running with these on your shoulder on the sand. This is pathetic. This is as easy as it's going to get. You've got to stop flashing. Put it over the bar. Shot Uh, we lost another one last night. Yeah, he just pulled the pin. He walked in and said to the boys, oh, yep, see you later, boys, I'm out. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? His yeah, just went and said he's had enough. I think it just broke him mentally. Just the, uh, yeah. He, 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 he could keep up with the physical side of it, but just mentally, yeah, he just, he's a good bloke too. It's usually really weird when someone drops out because, look, you muster up for your, your next timing and you're missing a number and you're just like, what the hell? Then they come back holding a vest saying, you've just lost another member and yeah, and there's going to be plenty more to go, only less than half of you are going to get through. Why don't you just give up now? And I, Everyone's like, I'm not giving up. OK, listen up. For this test, you will each be required to breath hold dive in approximately three metres of water. You will tie a bowline to the handle of the cruciform. Staff will check your knots and you will continue until you have successfully tied one bolin each. The bolin is the most commonly used knot in the Navy. But after six gruelling days of CDAT, even the simplest task can be daunting, as Brody Limbury from Outback Queensland is about to find out. Oh, negative. Have you completed task number 14? No, PO. Right, I'm seeing nothing here but amateur hour. It looks shit, it looks unprofessional, and I'm starting to get pissed off. We have to do this shit in the dark when no one else can help us out. Think about it. I you hold on to it till we're finished. Put your hand above your head. <laughs> Up and inboard. Yeah. Not completing this simple test could see Brody fail CDAT. Placing out to sea. Think of your career. Listen up, gents. The 0530 timing has been amended. You are required to muster now. Let's go, boys. It's another 2 a.m. start, and the candidates have been ordered to pack their kits. CDAT has a few more surprises. Head to the water by the tailboard. It's Groundhog Day, and the men will have to repeat all the torturous activities of a previous day.
sleep deprived and ground down by the mind numbing repetition, the men are reaching the limits of their strength and patience. That could really bring a light out in a bloke. You know, he's dragged out of bed at 2 o'clock in the morning and the day prior he's been flogged. Obviously it's there to remove them from, from their comfort zone. So uh, anyone can be their best with nine, ten hours sleep. Absolutely, we'd all be bloody athletes. But there's, there's a reason for that, not only so we can, we can really bring out the guts of, of their character, but also that uh, these are conditions they work under if employed as a clearance diver. We're just camping on some hill like that. No sleeping bags, nothing, just make do with what you've got, I guess. Try to get as comfy as you can. Oh yeah, hanging in there. I feel like my legs are about to fall off. Never really wanted a normal nine to five job. When someone comes up and asks you, you know, what do you do for a living? I say, I'm a plumber, and it's like, yeah, like, there heaps of plumbers out there. So, yeah, if someone comes up and asks you, what do you do? So, yeah, I'm, I'm a clearance so I was like, oh, what's that? <laughs> Something a little bit different, a little bit more exciting. Yeah. A new day and a new challenge. This time a simulated covert operation and yet another gruelling climb. There's a lighthouse just over there. And we've got a rendezvous with someone up there. We've got about an hour and a half to get up there, so we've got, we should have heaps of time. But you never know, anything can happen. If they're to operate in real conditions, the men must learn to follow orders to the letter. In this test, They've been specifically ordered to stay together and wear exactly the same uniform. 22's fiddling around with his backpack. 11's gone. Look at that. Undressing. Don't even know we're here. So now, yeah, so he's yeah. got his on, he's got his off. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't know what he's doing. 20's going for a stroll. I'm going to go rattle that shit to you, eh? No? 21, you say? Nice. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. I'll hand it back when I'm good and ready. If at all. What do you want me to do now? Yeah. Alright, yeah. oh, let's see. Just leaving it around looks fucking like unprofessional, doesn't it? Yeah. There you go. The men's mistake with their uniforms incurs a punishment. Alright, gather in, lads. They have half an hour to get back to the beach and identify themselves to Chief Shirley with an exchange of code words. Fatigue is causing the men's minds and bodies to shut down. Hold up. Yet as clearance divers, they will have to perform more complex and dangerous tasks under these conditions all the time. But for now, Todd Adamson struggles with a simple task. Oh, I'm just cruising. Just... As designated team leader, he has to respond to Chief Shirley's code words, a little, with the word further. Yeah, before it was a little, um, it was a little cold. Yeah, it was a bit cold before, but um, mm. just a little. <sighs> yeah. I knew what had to be said, and by the time we got down the beach, we were a bit late, and the chief just threw me off with the way he, he um, started talking to me. Of course, I've had to wait a little longer than I expected to. I think I've been compromised, so I'll have to uh, pass on another one of my blokes. Yeah. Um, he's up at Baron Joe Lighthouse. Next thing uh, I know, he's, he's made us walk back up again. The boys are de devastated. <laughs> See you later. This is basically what we put them all through to get them to this point. They're tired, they're sore, they're flogged, possibly even pissed off. You can see now who's organising the troops who's shutting down. Some of the blokes you can tell are going to be going to be rock solid. No matter how much you flog them, they'll keep taking it and they'll keep performing and they'll keep thinking on their feet. And this is good. This is what we need to see.
The clearance diver assessment test is nearly at an end. But for number 14, Brodie Limbury, one hurdle still remains. He must pass the Bolin test. Divers use it as, to tie off their lifelines. Um, they tie it around themselves because it's not going to come undone because it's pretty, pretty safe, pretty good knot. Like, say this is your lifeline, you get it. Make a uh, bow line. And um, I'd be pretty disappointed in myself like, if I failed because of a simple bow line. Like, yeah. Let's go in the water, move! This is going to be your last opportunity to complete this task. In your time, go on. Brody's success does not guarantee that he will pass CDAT. Okay, Andrew, what do you got on here? The school's assessment panel must look at each candidate's total performance. Even at this late stage, some of them will be rejected. Today was uh, a, hard, a tough, a tough day for all candidates, and as it is, they're they're on rock bottom. And this is where the the true character traits come out. I saw a real lack of urgency today. Quite disorganised. Yep. Particularly with respect to his gear, finds real difficulty following briefings. I like him because he's emotionless, which is an absolute must as far as I'm concerned. I think he made a deliberate attempt to play the grey man, not put his head up above, above the above the rest of the guys, because uh, often when you do that, it gets chopped off. He still has not got his shit together. Mm. To me, that means he will never have his shit together. You give him any more than a lunchbox, he's going to start losing stuff. CEDAT. 27 men started CDAT, 18 are finished, but only 13 will be accepted for clearance diver training. Oh, it's nervous as, very nervous. This is... After being pulled off his first attempt at CDAT, Making it through these 10 days means a lot to number 21, Matthew Docker. Sometimes I wish that they never pulled me off that last one, even if they did fail me at the end, but just not knowing whether I could have finished it or not was kind of playing, playing on my mind a bit, so that kind of gave me a bit of motivation to take on the next one. An A-class pass means Dobbo is an automatic qualifier for the clearance diver's course. Sweet. Happy ass. What? It's uh, pretty devastating. After going through those ten days and then, you know, being told that uh, they weren't happy with you know what you did or with your performance. Brodie Limbury is desperate to pass CDAT, to prove something not just to himself, but to his family as well. But since failing the Boland test, his confidence has taken a battering. I'll now ask my staff to uh, make some comments on your performance, uh, starting with Lieutenant Commander Gordon. A few days ago, I thought you'd actually dropped the ball. You had difficulty organising caring for your equipment, on various occasions losing your cap, your torch, your rope toggle, your water bottle, and demonstrating failure to attend to briefing details. You seem to take a bit of a hit when you struggle with that first bow line, but uh, you still dug deep. You're very good with teamwork, come up with a lot of uh, good ideas, which, which is unusual for someone uh, as young as yourself compared to some of the older blokes we've got here. 
I think you start to shine a bit when a few other blokes are dropping back, when everyone was starting to get their lowest. You kept pushing through. You managed to keep your sense of humour, and when you finally did pass the uh, bowline test, yeah, you're, you're a new man all of a sudden, throwing jellyfish and smiling and high fives all around. Okay, Simon Limber, you've uh, been awarded an A class pass. Did you go, Rhodes? Look at that glow, look at that glow. Hey. 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 The last 10 days have just been a test, that's all it is. Uh, they've obviously been taught nothing about clearance diving. It's just a test. It is quite a long, long way to go. But this is hopefully to prove that we have the right sort of material to work with to turn them into clearance divers. Because as you know, a potter doesn't work with shit. <laughs> he works with clay. So hopefully we've got clay. Next on Navy Divers, the men's clearance diver training begins. The jolly attendant, do not give the dive too much slack. Let's sort it out. All right, you blokes? New equipment, new skills, new pressure. In turbulent water off Sydney Harbour, they'll dive deeper than any of them have been before. There will be casualties. Let's go! Let's go! 